Los Angeles Athletic Club is the setting. The story is the fifth annual United States Handball Association Tournament. The all-star cast includes national champion Vic Hershkowitz and Chicago's most promising youngster, Johnny Sloan. There's a record-breaking supporting cast of 251 entries from all corners of the country. Audiences from 300 to 500 persons were cleverly handled by the large glass gallery and closed-circuit television furnished by Athletic Club President Frank Hathaway. Hershkowitz is playing a semifinal match with a Detroit star Paul Stoby. The champ knocked Jim Harp out of the tourney. The Los Angeles Athletic Club star Maury Singer found out experience is a great asset when Chicago star Phil Collins won in two straight games. The Buffalo strongman Harold Schrutt was just that, too strong for gentleman Jim Ritter from Montana. We think this boy Phil Collins is playing is ready for a starring role. Here we see another local player, Bill Fievo from the Hollywood Y. The popular ex-champion from Chicago, Gus Lewis, is meeting with Jacobs. Jim won a close decision in two games. The 47 champion is still one of the toughest singles players in the game. Finals in the Masters. Shane, Boisery, Brodemarkel, and Hackney. Challenging for the crown, the LAAC team of Boisery and Shane. Guess who won that final rally for the title? Well, how often does a guy win the National Masters Tournament? In the finals of the doubles matches, it's easy to see why the defending champions, Sam Haber and Kenny Schneider, never lost a single game in the tournament. Haber, number one, his partner, Ken Schneider, number two, played steady ball the entire tournament. This makes two in a row for this pair and the fifth national doubles title for Sam Haber. Jack Gordon, A on his shirt, and Harry Dreyfus, B, pressed the champs to 18 points in the first game and lost the second try, 21-8. It looks like this team will be on top for some time to come. The big sequence in our story was the finals of the singles championship. In the starring role, Vic Hershkowitz, the master of them all, with 16 national titles under his belt. And playing the heavy role was our own club champion, Jimmy Jacobs. This part of the story was televised throughout Southern California by the popular Hollywood star and handball player, Art Linkletter. He was assisted by the fine sports announcer, Bill Welch. The powerful and speedy Jacobs seems a little nervous in his first big part. The veteran Hershkowitz has been cast in these hero roles so often it's old stuff to him. Both men had some tough games getting to the finals. Vic was pressed to three games by young Johnny Sloan, and Jimmy Jacobs had three long games with Phil Collins. Gus Lewis also gave Jimmy trouble, with 21-20 and 21-19 scores. But here they are, so on with the game. Jimmy won the toss and will serve to Vic, who has the number one on his shirt. Jimmy wears the number two. 
Jimmy draws first blood with a corner kill shot. Now Jimmy misses a right corner kill for an out. A perfect ace down the right wall. Now it's Vic's turn to miss, side out. This time Vic makes a perfect kill. The boys settle down to steady play now, but Vic finds an opening and kills in the right corner. Vic seems to like that corner kill and tries another one for a point. Three playing one. Jacob seems a little tight and the pace is picking up. Jim misses to make it four to one. Notice how the champ likes to keep in the front court. He is trying for the right corner kill and gets it. Five playing one. Another ace for Vic. Six plays one. Here comes another one. Ace. Seven to one. Now Vic will force Jimmy into a miss for another point. Eight plays one. The rallies are getting longer and harder. The pressure is on. Both boys are loosened up now. And Vic gets a cripple to kill. Vic gets a break on a near hinder and passes Vic down the right side. Jim has got to catch that eight point lead and helps with a corner kill shot. This time it's Vic's turn to miss. Here seems to be the pattern for the entire game. Jimmy keeping Vic deep in the corners. Misses like this cost Vic nine points in the first game. Jimmy gets his favorite kill shot in this rally. That right corner shot. He's closing the gap, it's five playing nine. This is one of the longest volleys of the game. Jimmy is closing in and Vic knows it. The champ is trying to keep Jimmy away from that right corner kill and Jim is doing his best to keep Vic out of the front court. Vic has made three costly errors so far and Jimmy has flubbed only twice. Both are using perfect placements and drives in an effort to get the one shot they want. And Jimmy gets a hard right wall drive through for the point. The score is now Vic nine and Jacob closes the gap down to a three point lead. The large crowd and the fast pace made it hot and close in the glassed in court. However, both men were in excellent shape and very few towels were called for. Jim seems to be gaining confidence. A tough serve sets up this powerful drive down the left side. Here is a pair of shots you'll seldom see in a national tournament. That's right, double shorts for a side out. Vic now leads by a score of nine to seven and picks up another point through a left hand flub by Jacobs. Here we see Vic hit one a little hard and gives Jimmy his back wall setup, which he flattens for a side out. 
In this volley, watch how Jimmy is still trying for the right corner kill. He takes the shot a little high, but it works for a point. And now it's eight plays ten. We pick up this volley during the play. Vic hits a hard drive and forces Jimmy to miss. Side out. With Vic's lead dwindling, he is out to get some points this inning. The game is steadying down to more drives and ceiling shots with the setups few and far between. Vic soon finds one he likes and passes Jimmy for a point. Vic likes that pass shot and tries it again. This time Jimmy catches up to it and with a little back wall help tries for the return. But it misses. Point for Vic. Here's another one of the tough tries. Vic misses for the side out. Here comes a miss for Jimmy. It's a back wall setup which he seldom dumps. Side out. Vic now has Jimmy 13 to 8. Jimmy catches up to that pass shot again. Vic is ready and lays it away for the point. Jacobs tries and makes a left wall kill. Jimmy hits the floor and is out. That's twice he lost his serve. Jimmy seems to be going all out to make up for that last boo-boo. He wants that serve back and is playing for his setup. Vic is trying his best to add one more point to his five tally lead over Jimmy. The volley could have gone either way and was one of the crucial rallies in the first game. Vic hits one too hard and sets it up on the back wall. You guessed it, a kill by Jimmy. This time, Jimmy throws Vic a nasty serve which the champ can't handle. Vic tries hard for this pass shot down the left, but to no avail. Point 10 plays 13. Here is one of the nine misses that hurt Vic in the first game. Vic anticipates Jimmy's kill and digs it nicely for a side out. If Vic could have held the front court and kept killing like this, the game would have been different. Vic likes the way he made that last point, so he's going to do it again. And does. Vic gets a good serve. A nice fat chance, but he misses his kill. Jimmy is determined to keep Vic out of the short line, and that is how he sets up this left corner kill shot for a point. 11 plays, 15. Vic seems to be tiring from the running. He misses a tough one off the back wall. Jimmy is pressing Vic hard now as he's closing the gap. A good serve set up the kill shot. It looks like Vic is getting tired of Jimmy serving so much. He looks determined to get him out in this volley. Now it's Jimmy's turn to flub one off the back wall. Side out.
Here comes 36 seconds of one of the hard-fought rallies of the two-game match. The first game lasted 44 minutes, and you can see how those powerful legs of Jimmy's forced the champ to move around the glassed-in court. It was after this long volley that Vic started to limp a little on his right leg. Vic is getting enough of this running. He blasts a pass shot down the wall to get a hard-earned point. Jacob's strategy to use high ceiling shots and lobs to the backcourt corners seems to be paying off. It looks like the champ is feeling the running. Vic now makes the score 18 to 14 with a right hand kill shot. Again we see how Jimmy is determined to keep Vic moving and prevent those serve and kill rallies. Even though Vic has to work harder for his shots, he still keeps working for the kill and finally lays one away. Vic now serves with 19 points to Jimmy's 14. Two points away from the first game of the national championship. The points are not coming easy at this stage of the game. And Jimmy is bouncing around the court like a rubber ball. He seems to get his hand on everything Vic can throw. But a left corner kill is the shot Vic uses to end the rally for the 20th point. As Vic serves for his 21st point, everyone but Jimmy thinks the game is about over. But Jim comes up with his famous right corner kill and puts Vic out. Here comes one of the ceiling shots that Vic misses to keep Jimmy in the running. Here comes another error which Vic made to bring Jimmy up to 16 plays 20. Here's another one of the long rallies of the two game finals. 40 seconds of lightning like action by both players. It is interesting to note that this is the first time any finals were photographed on movie film showing the entire action of both games. In running and rerunning of these films, the student of handball is able to analyze every motion made by the two players and decide the factors which accounted for victory or defeat. The splendid effort put forth by the champion in digging the kill shots of Jimmy shows the fighting heart of Vic and explains why he holds so many titles. It is apparent to the champ now that this kid Jacobs is built of steel band. He just won't give an inch and never seems to tire. The only way to get that last point is to shoot for the bottom board and keep it flat. Now we see Vic putting everything into the first serve in an effort to pick up an ace. But he serves a short. Here he seems tired and reluctant to give away in front center court a hinder. Vic is still trying for the game point, and Jimmy is just as determined to keep him from getting it. Vic volleys well and keeps the front court spot covered nicely. Those right corner kills have to be low to keep Jimmy from coming up with them. And that's just what he does with this one to pick down the left wall. Notice the beautiful control of the ball Jimmy keeps from the serve on in this rally. Everything's down the left till Vic brings one out, and then it's a hard drive down the right wall for a pass shot. The score now, 19 playing 20. This time, Jimmy fails to keep Vic deep, and the champ picks one out of the air off the right wall for a perfect kill shot. Side out, 20 to 19. Vic seems to give Jimmy rather an easy serve to start this long 44 second rally and never quite gets the offense away from the challenger.
Jimmy finally gets a good right hand crack at the ball and whips it down the left wall with a good hop, which makes it jump into the left wall and break into Vic's body for a side out. Here Jim tries for the quick way to score, but gets a short ball. 19 playing 20. Jimmy now gives Vic an easy serve, which Vic tees off on and gets Jim in a hole. Then passes Jimmy down the left wall for the out. This is the third time Vic will serve for the game point, and again he's short. Now on the fourth try for the game point, Vic serves with his left hand, trying to change his luck, no doubt. The serve was a tough toss around the walls, but Jim brought it back well, and the 52-second rally is on. Both men hit the ball a total of 21 times in this battle, and the try for kills was almost nil. Both seem content to make the other man miss. And it was Vic that came up with the air on a high shot to the right rear corner that looked like it may have crotched and took a bad bounce. Jimmy is holding on to the front court and won't be moved out. Vic tries to drive one of Jimmy, but Jimmy drops it down on the right side for a kill and the tying point. The score now, 20 plays 20. Here Jimmy hurries to retrieve the ball and get his serve off as he feels Vic is tiring. He wants that 21st point badly, but Vic calls dead ball as he's not ready. Here comes the game winning play. Jim keeps Vic in the rear court and Vic dumps a high shot into the floor giving Jimmy the game point. The score, 21 to 20. A predominantly local gallery gives Jimmy a tremendous hand for his stunning first game victory. This well-muscled youngster of 24 has proven the advanced publicity to be right. He is capable of winning the title in 1955. In this second game, he's going to be tough. Vic started the second game and set the pattern for the entire game on the first rally. His miss put Jimmy in to start the 22-minute one-sided final game. Jimmy started off moving well and full of confidence. His placements and perfect kill shots had Vic missing repeatedly. 11 errors for points was the champion's record for the last game. In the first game, Vic gave away nine points on errors. That's a total of 20 points in two games. The powerhouse Jacobs made only six errors in both games. That is how the record book told the scoring, and you are seeing the very misses in the first few rallies of the second game. In this final game, the youngster Jacobs scores at will. Vic seems tired and uninterested in the battle. Jimmy is displaying a well-balanced, all-around type of handball. He has two fine hands, a deadly kill shot, wonderful placements, the power to pass his opponent almost at will. And above all, as demonstrated in the first game, he has the ability to pace himself. Unlimited strength, speed, and stamina, and a rare coolness under pressure. After working on these films for some time and having the chance to view this kid in action many, many times, I finally found the above description of the boy in the ace yearbook and written by the man that should know, Angie Trulio. Trulio also observes that Phil Collins and Young Sloan could give Jimmy a good game with an additional 20 pounds weight on their frames. This remark seems to be the secret. Jimmy has the power to drive the pass shots down the walls with apparently no effort. He can drop low and whip a kill shot in as fast as the best of them. He seems to change his mind in the middle of an attempt and nonchalantly lob an easy one up to the ceiling and drop it in to the rear corner. He can catch up to the pass shots 
and hit the rear wall to the front wall with either hand. And if you have never had to face his serves, you're lucky. It will hop a foot or more either way, and the ball is traveling like a bullet. Vic misses the kill laid down by Jimmy for the final point and the match. A new champion is made. The crowd was overwhelmed with the startling victory the 24-year-old kid had given the master of the handball world. Jimmy lost 15 pounds in the week-long play, and Vic must have lost at least 10. It was a tough row to hoe with men like Lewis, Schrutt, Sloan, Collins, and Paul Stobie. All had to be played, and in one week, with very little rest, these two boys reached the top of the 64 bracket tournament. United States handball president Bob Kendlar and Los Angeles Athletic Club Prexy Frank Hathaway are congratulating the boys and giving out the trophies. Hershkowitz at 37 and Jacobs at 24. How about next year? Can Vic get in the kind of shape it's going to take to win the crown back again? How much tougher would the games have been if Vic had been in tip-top shape? These questions will have to wait till 56 in St. Louis. Good luck, boys. To all the men of the handball fraternity, many thanks for your wonderful efforts in making the 1955 United States Handball Championships the best ever. The Los Angeles Athletic Club, President Frank Hathaway, Commissioner Danny Phillips, and all the gang are proud and happy to have had so many stars of the game represented in this tournament. So many just plain nice guys. Handballers, everyone.